All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sako here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of actually really, really good news stuff for you today. The, today was just littered with awesome news, uh, whether it be good news or bad news. Either way, interesting news. Uh, I've just ate two bags of cinnamon twist from Taco Bell, and I got a Baja Blast. So Taco Bell owes me a lot of money now, too. Uh, $8,000. Uh, so sooner or later, I'm going to get all these royalties, I promise. And maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll share the wealth. One of these days, they're coming. But let's just jump right into the main story of miners or miners again. Bitcoin Core developers launch an alternative mining protocol. Okay, so uh, beginning June 25th, um, describes vulnerabilities. The pool uses better hash, um, uh, a protocol which seeks to offer mining pool users the option to, to use their own block templates rather than those prescribed by pool owners. So the setup differs from major Bitcoin mining pools such as Bitmain and Ant Pool, which uses Stratum, the most widely used protocol among miners. And so over the over Stratum, you get uh, you get the block templates, you get information about how to build the Coinbase, and also information representing all of the transactions on the block. This means that end user miners have largely no control over what they're mining on. So really, it's uh, concerns in the Bitcoin community, oh my god, I can't talk, uh, continue to mount over the increasing presence of major mining pools, such as Bitmain, which currently controls around 42% of the hash rate, whoa, and keeps climbing to new record highs, and while still below the 50% threshold uh, required to exert malicious influence, uh, they are looking to get uh, via BTC, a pool which, if controlled by Bitmain, uh, would offer them an additional 9% hash rate, putting them just over that, uh, that magic amount. Um, <clears throat> so this protocol is designed to, to allow users to run their full, own full node if they want to, uh, and they can build their own templates, select their own transactions, uh, choose which block they're mining on pr um, to prevent a 51% attack or a selfish mining attack. Um, and you can actually get those, uh, you can take a look at it, uh, where was the, uh, uh, in GitHub here. Um, so if, uh, this link here will be in the description below, and you can click on that, uh, Twitter and get the GitHub, but, uh, setting it up, it's probably easier said than done. Um, probably not going to get into it, but... If you happen to have ant miners or anything like that to mine on it, um, the problem is it's going to be it's going to be a SHA-256 pool. So if you if you just have GPUs or something, it doesn't really apply to you, unfortunately, because your hash rate won't really be able to keep up. And moving on, Japan's internet giant GMO finally launches a new upgraded seven nanometer Bitcoin miner. Uh, so we have the GMO miner B3 launched. GMO Internet Group announced Monday the launch of its new model of 7 nanometer Bitcoin mining rig. And somebody actually corrected me once uh, because I said that 7 nanometer was uh, way less than, than a human hair and I didn't actually know what the width of a human hair was. And they said it's about 80,000 nanometers. So 7 nanometers compared to 80,000. So take a, take, take a piece of hair and then look at it. 7 nanometers. Pretty impressive. GMO Miner B3. Uh, so here we go. So as it's uh, as with its predecessor, GMO Miner B2, the new model uses the mining ASIC of the seven nanometer process, uh, which supports cryptocurrency mining of SHA-256 and can execute mining of Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, of course, um, and the other 256 algorithm as well. While the B2 model has a hash power of 24 terahash, the B3 has a maximum of 33 terahash, which is much better than our existing products, of course. Uh, the major characteristics of the GMO B3 are the maximum hash rate of, 20, of 33 terahash, as well as can um, adjust power optimally up to 33 terahash, depending on the mining environment and global hash rate. Uh, so still just $2,000 uh, for it. And, um, you know, I've started to become way less of a fan of... Uh, um, ASIC miners after a while, uh, really starting to uh, tear things up. But uh, the thing is, with with the with the Bitcoin algorithm, uh, it's kind of a different story. The, the difficulty is so high that if you didn't have ASICs, you, you couldn't do it anyway at the moment, unless you took all the ASICs away, and then everybody just magically started going on uh, Bitcoin with their GPU if it was profitable enough, and uh, that could mess with security and stuff for a time as the ha as the ha 
hash power fluctuated, yada, yada. Um, so that's probably not a good idea anymore. Uh, it's better just to have uh, the incredible difficulty of SHA-256, and that way the whole world is trying to mine Bitcoin and all actively participating in transactions. But it's some of the, you know, the bastions of other cryptos, such as, you know, like GP, like GPU mine crypto, you know, like like uh, uh, like Zcash and even Lira2, some point is going to get an ASIC miner, I'm sure. Um, so... Pretty potent, uh, way, way better than uh, an S9 miner, although um, you'd have to do the math to see which one you'd get uh, more for, because I know the S9s right now are like 800 bucks, and if you buy a good number of them, they're even less. Um, so you'd have to think, you know, like 14 tera hash, but then you'd have to get a whole bunch of individual power supplies for them and individual sockets to plug them in. Uh, so it might even be just way better to uh, grab a, a B3 and replace your, your S9s or something like that. Um, this one appears to have like double fans attached to the end of it, and whereas this one doesn't so much, uh, so it looks a little bigger there, but uh, doesn't um, look too different other than the fact that it looks like a uh, little double fans on both sides there. Either way, moving on to the next article, Japanese hacker jailed for remote crypto mining on victims' computers. So finally, some people are getting in trouble for for hacking with with crypto and uh honestly you know i, I don't want to see anybody get in trouble i don't want to see anybody have to get in trouble with cryptocurrency but uh if you're going to be hacking other people's computers and and you know using up other people's electricity might have to do might have to do the time japanese district court sentence uh to imprisonment a 24 year old man who was found guilty of crypto uh mining case uh the unemployed oh of course it's of course he's unemployed. Why? What? I mean, did we even have to put that in there? I could have told you that. Masato uh, Yasuda, if I said that right, who lives in the city of Ama Amagasaki. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm all messed up with the Japanese. Used a remote mining tool, enabling him to uh, use other people's personal computers without their knowledge or consent for crypto mining. Uh, likely Monero, I would imagine. Um... So uh, it says uh, one, two, for one year in prison, although the sentence was suspended for three years. Get this. This is a good one. This is a, this is a knee buster. Uh, so he, it's suspended for three years. So he doesn't actually have to go to jail for one year for three years, uh, which is, you know, happens from time to time in the world. It, you know, you get a delayed sentence. Uh, the defendant regret, re regretted what he did. Um, and, and it, it gets it suspended for three years because he regretted what he did and was learning information ethics. That's a real thing. That's a real quote. He was learning. You know what? I'm going to. What What if he just kicked in the door of a bank and robbed it? And then when you got arrested, you were like, you know, I was just learning ethics to the judge. And they're like, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good. I, I haven't actually heard a good response like that. And plenty of years here's your three years before you got to go to jail good sir i'm like thank you judge he's like man you're an upstanding citizen i wish i didn't even have to give you i because you were just learning ethics i wish i didn't even have to give you time but i have to i'm like i understand judge i understand i'll get off early i won't even do the full year i'll be good in prison and i'll get out in six months he's like yes you will man what a great guy we're gonna hang out because he was just learning information ethics guys come on Oh, man, it's good. So I didn't see, I, I didn't actually see how much he took, and I, I don't even think it really matters, to be totally honest. Well, eh, maybe it does if it was like millions of dollars, but uh, how, how it, it really matters how long and how many computers he infected, I suppose, but it doesn't really matter how much he got. It's just the fact that he was doing it um, either way. So Coinbase custody is now live. Uh, but will institutional investors actually use it? So Coinbase customer, uh, Custody is a service uh, which, pro which provides storage for crypto assets for eligible financial institutions. So fi financial institutions. So uh, not you, uh, buddy. Not us, right, guy? You know, uh, and hedge funds across the world. The service has officially accepted its very first deposit and is now live for investors in the U.S. and Europe. Formerly, uh, Custody was introduced in May. Uh, when San Francisco-based exchange announced a suite of tools aimed at uh, facilitating institutional investors. It emphasized it is, is placed on its security. Uh, they, they keep your coins in cold storage. Uh, supposedly, the new cold storage uh, system has gone through a cryptographic design review and thorough penetration testing. Um, an official blog uh, describes the service as a combination of Coinbase's battle-tested cold storage for crypto assets, uh, an institutional-grade broker-dealer, 
and its reporting services and a comprehensive client coverage program. Um, so Coinbase custody requires a minimum balance of $10 million. Minimum balance of $10 million. Not us, right, guys? There is a setup fee of $100,000 as well as 10 basis points fee charged monthly, whatever that even means. Yeah, sure. I'll accept those. 10 basis points fee charged monthly. That doesn't... What is that? English? Um, so, yeah, it costs you a lot, but I suppose if you have $10 million, $10 million um, you know, $100,000, you are like, eh, you know, to make some good money, because you get, like, a broker dealer, you get cold storage, um, it kind of sounds like a good deal, I mean, if you don't want to deal with it yourself, and you happen to have $10 million, uh, and if you happen to have $10 million to put, you likely have way more than $10 million, because if you only had $10 million, it's probably not, probably not a good idea to use 100% of your money. Anyway, Bitcoin's hash rate drop, floods took out mining farms. Uh, this was pretty crazy. So the Bitcoin network suddenly retreated from peak mining prices, losing around 25% of its hash rate in a short period. BTC mining was above 44 million terahash, and it fell to 34 million within days. The period also coincided uh, with price weakness on the markets as BTC slid toward 5,800. According to some charts, the hash rate fell as low as 30 million. Um, so likely, if you have an S9 miner for the past few days, you might have been like, hey, why is this, uh, this seems like it's making a couple, a couple extra bucks a day. I wonder why. Well, this is why. This is exactly why. If you're, uh, and not just because of like slightly rising prices, uh, but uh, as we're at 6,500 now for Bitcoin, such a convenient little ticker. Um, and, you know, so... Your, your S9 is going to be making a little bit more. I remember I checked it about 6000 and it was only making about $4 a day, S9 miners right now. So you might be up a buck or two or something like that. It might be worth a check because of this uh, insane drop in hash rate. And likely it's going to be down like this for a little while. Uh, the reason was uh, for the drops turned out to be straightforward and dramatic. A series of floods in the Sichuan province uh, wiped out my, uh, mining farms in Sichuan. Uh, destroying ASIC machines. So I got the picture there, and you can see uh, it looks like somebody had a, themselves a mining facility somewhere in this area. Um, and then they're like, hey, let's put them out in the rain because uh, they're already destroyed. Uh, that's a shame. Look how many GPUs. Unbelievable. This is so much money. I mean, if you could go in here and just start taking what you wanted, this is like a candy shop. It's like a little crypto candy shop. You're like, uh, see how many S9 miners load me up. You do you do one of these and you have a friend load you up, you know what I mean? Where you're getting sticks in your hand for a fire or something. You're like, load me up with S9s and you take the video cards. You, you do the drugs, you take the video cards and the ASICs, and I'll drive fast. You know what I mean? Crypto candy shop. So that's why, uh, just in case, you're like, hey, wh why'd the hash rate just drop all of a sudden? Ramp price explodes amid EOS network speculation. For the next article here. On the EOS network, RAM is mostly used by developers to store the data used in, in the launching and product, uh, production of decentralized applications. RAM, in this case, refers to the general storage space in the EOS memory database and could also be used to create new accounts. The price of RAM completely exploded this past week seeing a 1,400% gain at the time of writing this article. The beginning of last week, however, was quite flat. The price of land RAM plateaued at around 0.10 to 0.11 EOS per kilobyte. Uh, yesterday morning, it had doubled to 0 0.20 EOS per kilobyte, and before blasting off to 0.77 EOS. Uh, one EOS account in particular made more than half a million dollars from buying up large amounts of RAM just after the mainnet launch, said uh, account has uh, been selling it off in batches during this current spike. So, uh, yeah. Uh, some are concerned that this huge spike in RAM price is only from speculation and uh, warn that it could collapse as quickly as it shot off. Uh, one Reddit user wrote a uh, post urging that those uh, looking to buy up large amounts of RAM on speculation understand that um, the risks taken are huge. Uh, one of the largest concerns revolves around the total amount of RAM on the EOS network. The chart above shows that there are currently 64 gigabytes overall on the network. 55 of them are already being bought and held by EOS users. Scarcity seems to be the reason many EOS users are speculating on being able to sell it for higher price as more people buy up the rest. So EOS, uh, always a good time. Always a good time making it into the news. I think... I 
we need to take a poll. We need to take a poll down in the comments below. What appears in the news more often, John McAfee or EOS? John McAfee or EOS? We should take bets. We should start betting, uh, but not actually betting because this is probably a really bad idea. But just to yourself, to yourself. Hey, tomorrow, what's going to be in the news? EOS or John McAfee? You know what I mean? That's a that's a good. I'll have to consider that. Moving on. So why institutional money is coming and what this means for Bitcoin. We've been hearing this for a long time now. But let's give it a shot and see what they have to say. Institutional money is coming. I'm sure it is. Just like uh, the, the dragons in Game of Thrones. The dragons are coming. The dragons are definitely coming. And they did. But uh, it took a while. Um, at least uh, that's been the refrain from desperate cryptocurrency traders for the past six months, exactly, praying for an influx of new fiat to shore up prices to float their alt bags. Uh, but is it really the case that institutional investors are waiting on the sidelines for the right framework to buy in? Speaking of this, just before this, uh, somebody linked uh, on my channel a, uh, a link to an article that says, Economist says that the futures market uh, dumped Bitcoin, um, dumped the price of Bitcoin. Uh, I'm, I'm glad economists are finally waking up to that, uh, even though I've seen that, like, uh, we, I basically came to that conclusion weeks after it happened, and now it's all this time, gotta love it, all this time, and they're like, hey, I think the futures market dumped uh, the price of crypto. Oh, you think? Mmm, mm, really good information. Um, so, but is it really the case that institutionals are waiting on the sidelines at Blockchain Expo in Amsterdam last week? Uh, News.bitcoin.com. Good old just BT, B, BCH.com spoke to two exchange leaders who are confident that it's a question of when, not if. Kind of true. Institutional money is coming, but will it benefit retail investors? Crypto assets surged by an average of 11.4 on Monday, with Bitcoin predictably the first to pop. The reason for the uh, pump has been attributed to Coinbase announcing that its custodial crypto service was finally live, uh, which again includes cold storage, institutional grade broker dealer, reporting services, client coverage program, so all kinds of stuff like that. Um, regulation, uh, we need security first. Uh, all these institutional investors that, you know, people were surprised that, you know, like Wall Street and these institutional investors weren't getting into Bitcoin when Bitcoin was at 2,000, and then 3,000, and then 4,000. Like, why aren't they in? Why aren't they in? Why aren't they in? And, and like, yes, they would have made so much money, and they realized this. But again, um, you know, they need they need this regulation. They need, like, surprisingly, as, as, as laughable and as ironic as this is, as, as Wall Street is notorious for breaking the law, they need they need to actually follow the law to some degree. I know that uh, people on the other side are like, ha ha ha, and I'm even laughing on the inside too, right? Because that, that's, a, that's a good, that's, that's funny. That's a good time. Really good stuff. Good uh, nine out of 10, you know, meme. However, uh, they they do. Uh, they, they have to follow the rules, at least on the books. And, uh, you know, they can't be trading things that could be considered a security uh, without being set up to be, to be trading securities. Um, so, you know, institutional investors, what are these days? Uh, what are these days? But I don't know. Uh, Coinbase custody, uh, I think we'll 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 take off a little bit. Uh, again, you know, f as we said in the in some of the in one of the earlier articles on on Coinbase custody, you need ten million dollars to get in, and uh, so that's institutional grade money, and that's you know honestly not a lot of money compared you know to what makes the world go round. So we'll have to see, uh, really, if that helps the our, our case or if it doesn't and it might raise the price but then they might just make it incredibly stable and that's okay for a currency for use uh and that's a that's that's good uh but in the end kind of makes the kind of makes the trading a little bit more boring but that's okay uh usually wall street typically tries to uh, keep keep it like level and barely moving uh and that way it's easier to trade they don't want to get in if, if they buy in at ten thousand and then it goes to six thousand dollars from months on end because then they have to basically call their investors and, and say uh yeah, don't worry the price is gonna go up soon uh, uh yeah i'm sorry blah 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 you know it'd be like some wolf of wall street type deal uh and it wouldn't be so good uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this particular episode. I wish I would have had the, um, 
the article that uh, somebody linked me on my channel uh, because it was just amazing to read, uh, and, and and I really like how they knew uh, that I would like that uh, that article because I've been saying for months now that futures. I even have a video called "Futures Ruined Bitcoin," and I basically show how the exact same uh, CBE futures group. Uh, when they picked up Bitcoin, it dumped. It dumped down to nothing. It dumped from 18000 and within a month, it was basically $6,000. And it literally dumped the day they picked it up. It's, cr it's crazy. And then um, the silvers market, the uranium market, all of them dumped, including gold. Actually, gold survived for a little bit, and then it dumped. Uh, but silver, uranium, and Bitcoin, and to some degree gold, uh, all dumped immediately after CBE Futures Group picked it up. Because they, they're basically trying to manipulate the price downward. They're betting against the price going, you know, or, uh, you know, against the price going up, so they're betting downward, uh, and then they dump the price however they can. They they buy the thing over the counter, and then they dump it onto a market, so it dumps the price down, and then boom, they pick up a ton of it on the cheap, and then they let it go up a little bit and do it again and again and again. Uh, crazy uh, the correlation. So if you haven't watched that episode, just go to my YouTube channel, type it uh, like Bitcoin futures destroyed or ruined Bitcoin or whatever. Uh, I can't even remember the title of my own video now, but you'll get the, it'll it'll definitely pop up. And uh, take a look at that. It's crazy. So is institutional money going to raise the price? I know futures and, and some institutions are not the same thing. Uh, but they're, they're not on your side is what I'm, is what I'm really trying to get at. Uh, they're only in it for themselves. So they're going to be buying it up uh, with, with levels that you, you couldn't even imagine. Uh, $10 million minimum to even get in. So they're going to be buying Bitcoin and crypto in mass uh, on, on levels that would, that would just b blow uh, people like you and I out of the water. So make sure you're really holding tight, um, you know, and just gaining, 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 because sooner or later, when the institutional investors do come, they're going to buy it all. Uh, the entire crypt, the entire crypt, uh, um, excuse me, market cap of cryptocurrency is currently, uh, what, like 250 billion, uh, 270, somewhere around there. I'm not sure at the moment. Uh, it's on coin market cap. I don't have it up at the moment. Uh, so let's just go with 270. Even let's go with $300 billion. $300 billion could be bought in a second. They could literally buy every single like piece. Uh, it would be hard to do that, of course, because it would have to all be up for sale. So I, just bear with me. But $300 billion is nothing. Um, that much money goes through Wall Street probably in hours um, or, or in half a day. I'm not even sure, uh, you know, with the level, but I'm sure it could be done. So it's like not like they're going to actually buy it all, but I'm just saying the amount of institutional money is just crazy. So something weird is going to happen sooner or later. The price is going to shoot through the roof or it's going to shoot through the roof and then go down or it's just going to completely go stagnant for a long time. Who knows? But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.